Welcome to Minimal Impact Design Standards MIDS Calculator Module 12, Constructed Ponds and Constructed Wetlands. If you'd like to see modules for other best management practices in the MIDS Calculator, you can click on these links or go to these links shown here on the right side of the screen. In this module, we'll show you some of the guidance and resources that are in the Minnesota Stormwater Manual. We'll talk about constructed ponds. We'll talk about constructed wetlands. The icons for those are shown here. This is for constructed ponds, constructed wetlands. And you'll see these icons in the calculator and in the manual. And we'll show you how to get to the Minnesota Stormwater Manual from the calculator. So I will escape out of this PowerPoint and go to the MIDS calculator. This icon here, you double click. And the screen shows up. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm just going to call it Ponds. I'll save that file, and then the main MIDS calculator screen should pop up. I'm going to maximize this. And you'll see that on this screen here, there are going to be three values that you're going to need to input to move into the schematic tab where you can work with your best management practice. First is you have to answer this question, are you using the calculator to determine compliance with a construction stormwater permit? I will say no. Next, I have to enter a zip code. I'm going to enter 55155, my current location, and you'll see that the rainfall data populates based on that zip code. And then I need to enter some impervious acreage for this particular site. And for this example, I'm going to have five acres of turf on B soils, five acres of turf on C soils, and 10 acres of impervious surface. The other information is optional. You can also change the retention requirement and the phosphorus and CSS event mean concentrations if you want. Um, you get a little flag that says that you're changing them, but it's okay to work with different values in the calculator. As soon as I click on the schematic button here at the top of the screen, you'll see this screen pop up, and you'll see in the left-hand toolbar here that is basically summary information or an accounting toolbar that tells you how many pervious and impervious acres you have that have not been routed yet. It tells you what your performance goal requirement is, and it provides information on progress you're making towards your performance goal and phosphorus and TSS reductions. Since we haven't entered the BMP yet, we don't have any values yet. We'll also see this BMP toolbar with all the BMPs in the MIDS calculator. I'm going to start with a constructed wetland, which is shown by this diagram, this icon here, as I showed earlier. I click on it and drag it onto my screen, and now I have my constructed wetland. I can either right-click or double-click on this icon. I'll double-click, and the first thing you notice is this red language here. It says, the calculator does not require sizing inputs for non-volume reducing BMPs. BMP should be sized according to guidelines in the Minnesota Stormwater Manual. This best management practice, constructed wetland, will not give you any reductions in volume. You will get reductions for phosphorus and TSS. So obviously you're going to make no progress towards meeting your performance goal with this practice. For this example, I'm going to input five acres of turf and five acres of turf on B soils and five acres on C soils and all my impervious surface. And you'll see that I don't need to go to any other screens because there's no sizing information. I can just go directly to my BMP summary. And that will provide me information, 0% volume reduction, but I am getting reductions for phosphorus, total particular phosphorus, no reduction for dissolved phosphorus, and a reduction for TSS. If I click on OK, and in my left toolbar here, you'll see the summary information show up. The, P the phosphorus removal and the TSS removal, and no removal of volume. I'm going to get rid of this BMP. I right-click and I hit delete. And so that will get rid of that practice. Um, I'm now going to put a constructed pond in place of it. I'm going to click and drag the constructed pond onto my screen, double-click or right-click, 
And now I'm going to route the acreages, five acres of turf on B soil, five acres of turf on C soil, and 10 acres uh, of impervious to this BMP. You can go to the BMP parameters tab. Again, when you do that, you'll get this language here that says, this BMP does not provide volume reduction towards the performance goal. However, there are three levels of design that you can choose from for this practice. Design level one, design level two, or design level three. And you'll get different reductions based on whatever design level you choose. Design level one, for example, you're gonna get 60% annual volume removal on TSS. If you go to design level two, you're gonna get a higher removal, 84%. And if you go to design level three, you're gonna get 90% reduction of TSS. So you do have some options here in your design level. If you want more information on what the design levels are, you can go to the Minnesota Stormwater Manual by clicking on the Help button, which I did. And this provides guidance on requirements, recommendations, information for using this particular BMP, the Stormwater Pond, in the MIDS calculator. And it provides some information on volume and pollute reductions. And you can see here the different design levels. So for design level one, where you get the lowest reduction, here is the design information design information for level two, and design information for level three. This page also includes some information on routing assumptions and then some other information like links and so forth. So anytime you're in the calculator, you can click on the help button and get to that BMP that you happen to be in for guidance on using that BMP in the MIDS calculator. I'm gonna go back to design level two. I'm gonna click on okay. And I'm back in my main screen, and you can see some results here on the left. I can go to results for my whole site, and that would provide me summary information for my entire site. If I had additional BMPs, those would show up on this summary page. I'm going to go back into the manual, the table of contents here. And if you scroll down to Models, calculations, methodologies, pollute removal, and credits. You'll see this link to minimal impact design standards. If you click on that, it will take you to a page that has all our guidance on MIDs or minimal impact design standards, including some overview, performance goal, design sequence, flowchart, and so forth. And then you can see here links to the calculator, including guidance for the calculator. And if you wanted to download the calculator, you can do that by clicking on these links. So in this module, we have talked about constructed ponds, constructed wetlands. If you'd like to view other modules in the manual, you can go to these links here in the stormwater manual and find out and get more information on other BMPs for the calculator. This ends Module 12, Constructive Ponds and Constructive Weapons.